This is a re-recording of a panel presentation entitled Thinking Big in Downtown Oakland, held at Spurs Downtown Oakland offices on July 10th, 2019. I am Morton Jensen, president of Jerry B. Urban International, an architecture and planning firm based in Oakland, California. This presentation was prepared in conjunction with Xu Shen Shao, president of CHS Consulting, a transportation planning firm based in San Francisco. Transbay East, options one and two, is intended to infer, inform Spurs regional plan for the San Francisco Bay Area. As part of the construction of BART, Market Street in San Francisco becomes an intermodal hub with Muni Metro uh, located on the lower level of combined station. Without BART and Muni Metro, Union Square would never have grown to become one of the three largest retail districts in the United States, nor would downtown San Francisco have become one of the largest concentration of jobs. Whereas San Francisco's streetcar system was masterfully integrated into the regional transportation system, Caltrain unfortunately was not, as it abruptly stops at 4th and Townsend, quite far from the city's original downtown core. In the East Bay, the Capital Corridor passenger rail connecting Oakland to San Jose and the Sacramento is hindered by sharing mainland tracks with freight traffic whose primary terminus is the Port of Oakland. Transbay Option 1 connects the two downtown cores via Broadway in downtown Oakland. While its land use characteristics might be similar to what could otherwise be a Franklin Street alignment, connecting the second Transbay tube directly to Broadway actually enables more direct transfers between lines, creates stronger land use benefits, and potentially some cost savings. Transbay option one, connecting at Broadway and encompassing five transit modes. Option one, mode one, BART second Transbay tube to increase capacity and assure redundancy. This Transbay tube would connect Oakland directly to San Francisco's Salesforce Transbay Center, whose constructed train box still stands empty, given the many unresolved challenges to extending rail service to this location from the previously mentioned 4th and Townsend. Here, BART could occupy the northern two of a total of six train platforms. In a second phase, this BART line could extend down Mission Street to 16th Street, with one or two stops along the way. With Transbay option one, BART would establish two parallel sets of tracks at the core of the system between MacArthur Station in Oakland and 16th Street Station in San Francisco. On the Oakland side, Transbay option one would connect directly to Broadway's historic transportation spine, here shown with its many streetcars that stopped at each one of the white boxes shown in the photograph from the 1920s. In blue are the existing BART lines connecting about the Y in downtown Oakland where two tracks extend to Warm Strings, Dublin, Pleasanton. Two tracks extend to San Francisco via West Oakland. And there are three tracks connecting north before they become four tracks on the way to MacArthur. Let's now zoom into the 19th Street Station. Passing by Charity V's office, in the Cathedral Building. At the 19th Street Station and the identical 12th Street Station, also on Broadway, there are two northbound tracks on the upper level and one asymmetrical southbound track on the lower level. With Transbay Option 1, a fourth track would be constructed replacing the unexcavated area on the lower level. This would enable four tracks from MacArthur through the 19th Street and the 12th Street stations. Beyond the 12th Street station, these four tracks would split with two continuing to San Francisco's Embarcadero Station via West Oakland and the current Transbay Tube, and two continuing to San Francisco's Salesforce Transit Center via a new Jack London BART station and a new second Transbay Tube. Option one, mode two, Caltrain across the bay connects the peninsula to the entire Bay Area. 
This Transbay Caltrain line would connect to the 4th and Townsend combined with a BART 2nd Transbay tube. On the Oakland side, the Caltrain would have a platform on the lower level of the Jack London station, which has BART on the upper level. This station would allow for easy transfers between the two systems, much like BART and Muni stations on Market Street in San Francisco. Option 1, Mode 3 electrified capital corridor, including possible high-speed rail. Here, the capital corridor is relocated on atop Interstate 880, away from the shared tracks, whose priority really is freight traffic to the port of Oakland. The electrified capital corridor would be supported by pylons extending vertically through the existing I-880. These pylons would be similar to the high-speed rail under construction near Fresno and the recently constructed flyovers on the Harbor Freeway in Los Angeles. The new electrified capital corridor platform, shown here in green, is built with a minimum amount of disruption to the existing I-80 below, shown in black. Between the new capital corridor platform and the existing I-80 is a new elevated public plaza connected to Broadway with outdoor escalators very similar to what is commonly found in Asian cities. A new East Bay Central Station vertically connects Caltrain, BART, and Electrified Capital Corridor. Option 1, Mode 4, Estuary and Emeryville linked by BRT. This BRT would connect Emeryville, West Oakland, and an A's ballpark to Brooklyn Basin with possible sub-routes extending into Alameda. The location of a BRT directly below I-80 would animate and give purpose to this unattractive area below the elevated highway, much the same way that the College Avenue underpass under Highway 24 is animated by the Rockbridge BART station. Also, this is very similar to how the BRT number 71 animates the underside of Shanghai's Yan'an elevated highway. Here shown are possible BRT routes to the Webster and Posey Street tubes in Alameda. This illustration shows how the Capital Corridor platforms could be covered. Some might say that an electrified Capital Corridor possible high-speed rail atop Interstate 880 might create too strong of a barrier between the center of downtown Oakland and Jack London Square, but in height and in length, the station construction would be no more of a barrier than the Trans Bay Center in San Francisco, which appropriately enough has new, dense, vigorous development on all its sides. Around the world and throughout history, transportation infrastructure has been in part paid for through new integrated development. With three underutilized full city blocks and public ownership on the corners where Interstate 880 and Broadway meet, the new transportation infrastructure can be leveraged um, just as it has been in San Francisco around Salesforce's Transbay Center, to say nothing of Grand Central Station in New York or other developments in London. Shanghai, Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Singapore. The development built here around the new East Bay Central Station could be the largest in the Western United States. Option 1, Mode 5, Enhanced AC Transit on Broadway with possible streetcar or BRT. The East Bay Central Station would be further leveraged with a streetcar or BRT to connect all of Broadway, the downtown's historic transportation spine in conjunction with expanded landscape sidewalks, new bike lanes, and emerging alternative transportation modes. Uptown, the Lakeside Office District, Latham Square, City Center, Chinatown, and Old Oakland would connect to the new Central Station while reactivating Oakland's historic Main Street with new locally and regionally serving ground floor retail gallery and maker space. Looking down Broadway, one would no longer see the sad concrete mattresses of Interstate 880 as the focal point of the city's main street. Instead, one would see the East Bay Central Station as a public icon with a relationship to Broadway similar to the Tower of Ferry Building in San Francisco on Market Street or the proud facade of Grand Central Station to Park Avenue in New York. Jared V's 10 million square foot mixed use project in Mutia, China is also similarly anchored by a new high-speed train station 
already under construction. Transbay option two, connecting Lake Merritt, encompassing four transit modes. Option two, mode one, Caltrain across the bay, connecting the peninsula to the East Bay. With option two, Caltrain would be extended first to San Francisco's Salesforce Transbay Center as originally envisioned, before connecting across the bay to Oakland. On the East Bay side, the new Transbay tube would connect to form an interchange with BART at the Lake Merritt Station. Along the way, this option provides a convenient nearby rail yard located between Interstate 880 and the existing mainline tracks. This interchange would help support the currently proposed mixed-use project at the Lake Merritt Station, the Oakland Museum of California, Laney College, and potential new development between the Lake Merritt Station and Brooklyn Basin. Within the interchange, the existing BART platform would be above the new Caltrain platform, intersecting at 90 degrees. Option two, mode two, electrified capital corridor, including possible high-speed rail, fully integrated with Caltrain. Beyond Lake Merritt Station, Caltrain is fully integrated into the capital corridor and very likely harmonized with BART as a unified metro system, though using different rolling stock. The next station on this line would be the Uptown Lake Office District, where Henry J. Kaiser built Kaiser Center in the 1960s. The station would be convenient not only to lakeside offices, but also to Adams Point, Grand Avenue, and within reasonable walking distance of even Lakeshore Avenue. The next station would be Mosswood Park, serving Oakland's medical district, connecting directly to both Kaiser Permanente's flagship hospital, as well as Summit's Pill Hill Hospital. The combined capital corridor, Caltrain, would then continue to another interchange with BART at MacArthur Station. The station is located under MacArthur Boulevard, with a below-grade platform connecting to the existing BART platform between the lanes of Highway 24. From this station, the combined capital corridor, uh, Caltrain, connects to the current alignment as it reaches the current Emeryville station before continuing northbound to Sacramento. Option two, mode three, streetcar on Broadway and linear Interstate 880 development. Option two is also envisioned with the potential for undergrounding Interstate 880, much like the Big Dig in Boston, of similar length. Placing Interstate 880 below grade would open up seven additional full blocks of development while removing the worst remaining 1950s and 1960s era aerial highways in the East Bay. With this option, the new streetcar, or BRT, previously discussed as part of option one, would instead extend eastwardly to the Lake Merritt Station, snaking between new mixed-use development built on top of the new underground freeway. Additionally, the existing rail, now converted to freight only, would be undergrounded so that they would be located vertically just above the existing Webster or Posey Street tubes, as well as a potential new Transbay Caltrain. Option two, mode four, BART from Broadway to San Francisco's Chase Center and 16th Street. Finally, option two is compatible with a third Transbay tube. That is a BART connection from Oakland's Broadway, similar to option one, but connecting to the new Chase Center and UC Mission Bay Hospital in San Francisco. The SPART line would then connect to 16th Street and finally out Geary Street to the Richmond District. With multiple additional Transbay Transit lines, the Bay Area is much better able to match the commute patterns here shown by Garrett Nelson. Overall, the Bay Area would have a public transportation network more like other global cities, who in all other cases have a dense network of transit lines at their core. The Bay Area is sadly unique in this regard, with currently only one Transbay rail link. Both options one and two aim to achieve the following overarching intentions. Number one, they can be implemented incrementally in a way that maximizes redundancy and transferability. Number two, they are ambitious and visionary, accepting that the strongest economies in the world will be those that support the most people in globally competitive urban areas. Number three, they are realistic by Asian European standards. Number four, they provide equity, creating greater access to jobs and housing through robust public transportation. And finally, number five, they promote inclusive economic development. Thank you.